G'day. In this video we're making a part that goes on a junior racing motorcycle and it stops important parts getting damaged if the bike gets dropped and slides along the ground. Here's a drawing of the part. This is a fairly basic part. And here's the drawing that I take into the CAD CAM software which has got tool paths and things like that in it. Here we're just uh, opening up the software. The PC is running Windows 98 and it's DOS software running within Windows 98. That screen there shows you your stock length, your stock diameter and your Z origin. And that's what the screen looks like. And there's the part drawn and zoomed in a bit. This is the simulation. See the boring bow is going into a hole that's already been drilled. There's the turning tool. You see we've got 3000 RPM showing up there just under the red running word on the screen. This is slowed down a bit to give you an idea that we're just pecking out the material so that we can go round that radius with the parting tool and part the thing off. And that's the end of the program. This is just quitting the software. Now this is soft jaws, made to suit the diameter of the part. You can see it's running out pretty terribly. That's because I had the parts chopped to length and they weren't chopped square. So I square that up in the centre lathe when I drill the 15 diameter hole. Um, that's a 15 diameter drill with the shank turned down to 12 because 12 is what I use in my gang tooling block on the CNC. There's just a couple of 12 mil ground pins being used to help me find the centre and the centre height of uh, where that 12 mil, that 15 mil drill will be going. Those uh, settings there on the DRO, they're zero for the drill, so as I can put it back in the right place all the time. And the 55Z, that was just for the length of the turning tool that I'll be using to face off the uh, part to 55 mil long. Here I'm drilling it both ends to start with. My 15mm drill wasn't long enough to go all the way through. So we're doing it from both ends and facing both ends. I ended up just facing one end because uh, I only needed one end faced because the rest was would be cleaned up in the centre lathe. Once I'd done a few of them, I realised that the 55mm was accurate enough even though the ends were not square. So. You only need to clean it up in the centre lathe when you're going into the CNC if you end up with a real big variety. You know, something uh, you need to take too much off that the first cut of the CNC lathe is going to complain or something. So, um, one end's good as long as the parts are reasonably accurate in their being made to length in the first place. That's just a felt tip pen mark on the drill there, so as I know how far to go in. Here I've changed the way of doing it, I'm turning it off first. I'm still turning both ends there. I made a lot of these parts, so you're seeing various bits being made here, but the way I ended up doing it was just facing one end. If you saw that being drawn back a bit then, that was to get it on zero again, according to the DRO, I must have moved the handle cross slide. Here you are. That's just, that run out is just due to the material not being terribly round. But you can see it's a good fit in the soft jaws. There's the turret, including a weight in the uh, slot next to the parting tool. This turret does not like to be run out of balance. It will miss tools if you uh, try and run it not down. You 
see the part, the parting tool there is a fairly big parting tool for that size shank. And the turning tool actually has uh, uh, an insert in it that I do not end up using. That uh, boring bar is actually for a boring head for a milling machine. But it's got a 12 mil shank and it will actually go into a 10 mil hole, so I use it a lot. It's really good. Here we're using the 3000 RPM that was actually shown in the software when we were looking at that. I'll end up doing it at 2000 RPM, I think, but uh, here I'm running it at 3. And we're now down to uh, there's an aluminium type turning tool in there, but it actually has a 0 0.4 nose radius and later we'll end up using a 0 0.8 nose radius trying to get a reasonable finish on these things it doesn't have to be wonderful but I don't know there's something there's something about some people it just makes them want to uh, try and make things look the best they can I suppose it's a bit of an affliction really you see that thing just poked in there and went round then it goes round the curve and I wasn't getting a very good finish I think you'll see somewhere in a minute. The um, so then I, I did something about trying to change the way I was parting off to try and get a better finish. There's the just turning finishes. You see the difference there. And then you can see when it was 0.8 radius and slowed down to 0.05. But you can see there the finish is still not good on the parting, and that's the sort of finish I was getting not very good so I changed it um, in the first instance I was just grooving the material away and then cutting the radius what I went to after that and you'll see it because I'll show it in a minute um, actually took a bit out and then cut a roughing radius so that the finish cut was actually, which is a radius obviously, was actually only removing the same amount of material for the whole of the cut and that seemed to make a difference and I ended up with a radius that looked quite reasonable. So instead of taking a radius cut that was removing different amounts of material all the way along its cut, it was actually removing the same amount of material for the whole of its cut and it gave a better result. Plastics love making this mess, don't they? This is how it was cutting, just in three groove type steps and then going round the radius. And then you'll see what I ended up doing and got a better result. That's just the parting, the turning tool getting out of the way. You see the parting tool goes in and then actually goes round a radius. There, we cut a radius there, then we cut another radius to, for the finish of the radius and gave, us a much, gave me a much better result. That swarf coming out of that hole is um, due to messing around a bit with the surface with the revs that the thing's doing and changing the feed and it ended up with the roughing cuts coming out the swarf came out quite well if you want a finish cut of any reasonable size you to give you a reasonable finish you end up with um, swarf filling the hole because it's not being cut fast enough to be projected out of the hole That's just the 0.05 feed on the finished cut, which I must admit was slow, but really didn't leave me with too bad a finish, I thought. I mean, it doesn't have to be wonderful. These parts are going on a motorcycle, and if it gets dropped, they're going to be a mess. But you do like to try and do a reasonable job 
There we go. Usually program a halt into these sorts of operations so that this stuff can be disposed of before we continue on. Really wouldn't want to be plunging the turning the parting tool into that. Now I think if you watch you'll see that the parting tool actually goes in, comes out, goes round a curve and then goes in. There you are. There's the curve, the radius. Then it comes back out and goes round another radius. That's the finishing radius and then it parts off. And I'm breaking the parts off as I normally do. This is the tool I was using to do the turning and you can see it's um, not a very good radius on that. That's the parting and whatever I was getting and how it ended up. And that's how the things look when they are finished. I was quite pleased with that. So, there you go. Thank you for watching.